Yes, hello everyone and welcome to another season of the Dribble Podcast. My name is Craig O'Donoghue from the West Australian newspaper and I'm looking forward to bringing you all the news and interviews across a massive summer of basketball in WA. And what a season we have in store for us with the Perth Wildcats. Their season tips off at RAC Arena on Friday night against the Tasmania Jack Jumpers and its new look team after some major changes during the off-season. One of the biggest changes has been the addition of French next star Alex Saar. And hasn't he taken the world by storm in the last few weeks? As evidenced by these comments from ESPN draft expert Jonathan Giveney, who had Saar ranked at number 19 just three months ago, but now has a vastly different opinion. The story of these two Ignite Perth games has to be Alex Saar. He was such an eye-opener with the way that he performed in both games, the energy that he brought on both ends of the floor, the athleticism, the defensive versatility, the finishing ability. He blocked everything. He was guarding everybody. He ran the floor. He was even playing point guard at certain stretches, making good reads out of dribble handoffs. He really did everything. That, you know, I've been watching Alex Saar since he was 15 years old. He didn't play with this kind of motor when he was 15 or 16. This is an acquired thing for Alex Saar. And this is what NBA scouts want to see from him. They want to see physicality, competitiveness, intensity. People are watching Alex Saar very closely this season. He's a candidate to be number one. Another expert from the US, Kevin O'Connor, wrote this about Saar just last week. After watching him produce his two brilliant games against G League Ignite, O'Connor said, quote, his breakout performance has put him in serious contention for the number one draft pick in 2024, end quote. So it's clear that he is capturing everyone's attention. Dozens of NBA scouts traveled from overseas to the Gold Coast last week to watch him in action during the NBL Blitz, and they certainly would have liked what they had seen. So the big question is, how did a 216-centimeter unicorn like Saar end up in Perth? I caught up with the man who recruited him to the NBL during the Blitz. So I'm here with NBL Next Stars General Manager of Recruitment, Liam Santa Maria. Liam, thank you very much for joining us on the Dribble, year one of this job, and you might have the number one draft pick. You must be pretty excited. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about all the Next Stars, Craig. I've got to be honest. Um, you know, we've got a great blend and mix of top young recruits and top NBA prospects that are going to be playing in the NBL this season and it's been really fun bringing them into the NBL, working with the clubs to find great spots for them and of course Alexander's a big part of that. I mean he's a, um, he's a guy who's got a very, very bright future. He had a spectacular week over in Las Vegas, a great way to get his preseason underway and um, you know everybody's very excited about what he's going to do this year in the red and black and then beyond in the NBA. So in your wildest dreams, when you recruited him to this league, did you think that you'd be starting the season with him being spoken about as a number one potential draft pick? Um, well, we all like to have wild dreams, Craig. So, uh, you know, you always kind of think and hope for the best for, for these kind of guys. And we knew Jeremy Lowliger and I, who were going through this process with Alex and his family and, and his representatives, that he was of special talent, that he is a special talent. So uh, there's, all, you know, you, with a guy who has that kind of high upside, you feel confident that he's going to tap into that upside in the right situation, but you're never quite sure of the timing of that. So for him to be in that kind of conversation at this really, really early point before they've even stepped out for one regular season game is pretty impressive. Uh, and it shows to how well he played over in Las Vegas over those couple of showcase games. So tell us how you get into the conversation with him, given he would have had options everywhere. Where does that begin from your perspective? Well, in this case, it began through the relationships that Jeremy Lowliger has built in this Next Star space over you know, four or five years since the Next Stars came into the mix. Um, you know, Alex's representatives have a re really good relationship with Jeremy. They trust him. And as a result, we were in conversation about Alex actually 14, 15 months ago. Um, about There was an initial conversation about what could it potentially look like for Alex to come in as a next star uh, in the 2022-23 season. And then at that point, that conversation was, was a decision that was made to say, you know what, he's going to stay at Overtime Elite for another year and let's see what it looks like beyond that. Um, so then 
uh, once they got to a point of deciding that a third year at overtime elite probably wasn't going to be the play. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Alex, his family and their representatives were looking at what other options might exist. That conversation re-engaged and uh, we went from there. So again, in this type of industry and space, relationships, trust, respect, uh, Jeremy's built that up over a long period of time and you know uh, I'm working with him closely to do the same now moving forward. So you're going in fresh then, like he's, Jeremy's been doing it for a while but mm. you, you've got the, the big job now and the, and the title of it so yeah. when you're starting to approach people for the first time how do, how do you build those relationships? Well one of the things is that re your reputation precedes you and as a league and as a program uh, yeah, that reputation is really strong. You know, agents talk and players talk and a lot of the time the guys that have come through the system, what they've done on the NBA floor and in the draft has spoken for itself. So you're starting from a pretty good space there um, and then it's about building those relationships with um, players, their families, agents, uh, NBA front office executives and, and scouts and personnel and um, you know, that's what we've been trying to do at a high level now for a little while. So given that, are you on planes flying over there to meet these guys personally or are you doing it via Zoom and, and phone calls? Because relationships are hard, harder to do via phone calls and Zoom, I would imagine. Yeah, so you take the opportunities where you can to spend some good solid time, places like NBA Summer League. Here at the Blitz, we've had a lot of NBA guests here this week, so spending plenty of time with those guys building relationships. And, um, and then you take some trips where you can. I was over at, uh, the, at the Nike Peach Jam event in July, uh, the NBA Academy Games in Atlanta before going to the Summer League. Uh, we've been getting around, we, you know, getting around to different places in Europe. Jeremy was at the EuroLeague Final Four where the ANGT Finals were held earlier this year. So there's a bit of travel involved, a lot of Zoom a heck of a lot of WhatsApp <laughs> in this process at crazy times because people that we're liaising with in Europe and North America aren't usually operating on this, you know, at the same working hours as, as we are here. So late nights, early mornings, lots of text messages and conversations and, um, you know, but looking at what it might lo have looked like for this group coming in this year and now for the next group, hopefully for, you know, NBL 25. So do you seal Alex by going to France, by going to America, or by looking down the computer screen? Uh, it was over Zoom, primarily with Alex. I mean, obviously those relationships with his um, representatives have been built up over a number of years in person and over the phone. But uh, with Alex and his family uh, and his camp and his brother, and it was very much done over Zoom. So with Jeremy and I initially, and then the process of taking Alex's interest in becoming a next star out to the clubs. So there was a process of expression of interest from each of the clubs as to who would like to work with Alex and bring him into their mix next season. Uh, in his case, after receiving all those expressions of interest, he and his group decided the first meeting that they wanted to have was with the Perth Wildcats. Danny Mills and John really knocked it out of the park. We also agreed that it would be a great landing spot for Alex and uh, the process got shut down at that point. He decided that there was no point taking any further meetings. He and everybody was comfortable going to Perth. They were super excited about the prospect of bringing him in and here we are. So talk us to how do you knock it out of the park in this situation? What, what, did they, what was their, the secret to their success? What, did they, what, what was their pitch? Well, certainly Danny has a really good understanding of this process during his time as, a, as an international scout, as a, you know, a director of scouting for the Philadelphia 76ers. He knows Australian basketball and the NBL, but he really, really knows uh, the NBA and the process of being a top prospect heading towards the draft. So his knowledge and understanding and connections and relationships in that space is really important. Uh, and then JR has, um, you know, he had a, a great story to tell Alex about the team, what they needed to add from last season coming into this year, and why Alex represented a big piece of that puzzle. And that's what these guys want to hear. Certainly that I'm going to be in a position to develop, but also that if you see me as an important piece to your puzzle to win games, then we've got the foundations for a successful relationship. 
So there's a perception that there's promises made about minutes and roles and things like that. Is that, is that the case or are they coming in knowing they have to earn everything they do? Earn what, you, you, earn what you're going to get. I think that that's a slippery slope to go down and certainly that's, that hasn't been the conversation at all at any point here with Alexander. Um, he, he's a great young man who knows the value of hard work and the importance of chemistry and culture within your team. Uh, so he comes in with an understanding that, um, you know, JR has played, has, has, has spoken about what the role he envisages and what it looks like. Um, and then you've got to come out here, work hard and do your thing and perform. And, you know, he's very much done that to this point. He's well supported by his family um, and, his, and, you know, his mum and dad who are in Perth with him, his brother who's watching on closely every step of the way, you know, and his representatives who are very experienced in this space. And he's very, very well presented, uh, supported by the Wildcats, his teammates, the coaching staff, the support staff, everybody involved. So we saw when Lamelo came out here, he didn't come with his own family, but he came with representatives to help, to help yeah. him out. In this, in this case, Alexander has his mum and dad, yeah. which seems strange when you look at it from an outside perspective, but then you go, he's 18 years old, of course he's going to come with his parents. Yeah. How do you recruit them as well? Because they're the ones who are ultimately making life decisions for him. Right. Well, they're living in Scarborough, so <laughs> it could be worse, right? I mean, they're, they're beautifully situated. They're, they're in Perth. As we know, it's a beautiful part of the world, and, um, you know, they... Uh, saw an opportunity to come and support Alexander throughout this, what is really going to be a good time, not a long time, uh, in Perth and in Australia, but also have a fabulous life experience of their own. You know, they're going to come and live in Perth for a little while, travel around, they're here in the Gold Coast, they're going to hit some other spots as well over the course of the season to get to know, you know, a bit more about Australia. And um, so we were thrilled when they told us that they were keen to come out here with Alex because who it is that comes out and supports the next star from their camp and their group is really really important and as we got to know Masara and Marie um, we you know we realized that they were going to be a fabulous support system for here on the ground. They look as normal a group of parents yeah. as you can have. Sporting parents aren't known for that, but every time I've seen them or interacted with them, they just seem like lovely people who are here because their kids here. Yeah, and they're having a terrific time. You know, I mean, they've said that the, the Wildcats have been outstanding in supporting them. I mean, people from the Wildcats front office have come out and done some driving lessons with Marie, for example, to help her get used to driving on the left side of the road. Um, they've helped connect them with someone to help them with, you know, improve their English further. Um, you know, and they're just very, very well supported by Danny and everybody there at the Wildcats. And um, yeah, you're right. They're very normal, loving people. They've got some experience because Olivier has gone through the process of being a top prospect, being a pro baller, and how, to, how they've learned a bit more, I think, about you know, what works and doesn't work necessarily in supporting someone through that process. And as a result, they're just doing a fabulous job so far of supporting Alex as he takes his first steps into the pro world. You were in Perth recently. Uh, you came down to Rockingham to watch them, watch him play there, and yeah. Dave Anderson was in town as well. How often will, will that sort of thing happen where the two of you or even just one of you are coming over to Perth to make sure that you're part of his journey? Yeah, m more so than what maybe was done previously. I guess we've got a few more hands on deck in the Next Stars space now, so we're going to look to do that. Um, Dave Anderson's going to serve as a really helpful mentor for Alex over the course of this season, I think. Um, you know, he's had a number of phone calls and Zoom calls with Alex um, prior to that visit to Perth. Um, even back to when, uh, before Alex came out and was still in, in Europe preparing to come out to Australia because, you know, Dave's got such unbelievable experience in the NBL, internationally in Europe, in the NBA, a four-time Olympian, and also as a skilled big. So there's so much about what Alexander's doing and is going to do over the course of his career that Dave can really relate to. So spending time uh, chatting with Alexander, even spending a little bit of time on the floor with him, showing him some post moves and some fadeaways and, and some of sort of the tricks of the trade, uh, I think he's going to be re a really big help uh, for Alex over the, the course of his time as an extra. 
We've seen Lamello, we've seen Josh Giddy really put this program on the map. Is this the year when you think uh, what Ellis could do, what the other guys who are considered top 10 prospects as well could do? Is this one where people are going to be going, oh my God, this is the place to be now? My hope is that every year is going to be like that. You know, you're right, those guys did that in a big way. Lamello put a lot of eyeballs on the Next Stars program. Josh Giddy has been a roaring success of an Aussie kid uh, following the pathway. Um, and of course, Usman Jiang was the first a lottery pick as well the following year. Uh, so there is a, a real appreciation for the pathway as being proven for young prospects who are looking to develop their game. And uh, I'm hopeful that this group will continue that, build on it, and then you know we can grow the program into bigger and bigger and better things moving forward. What's your favourite skill that Alex has? He's good at both ends. Yeah. Where, where do you look at it and go, that's what's going to get him the NBA contract? Uh, honestly, my favourite skill might be a little nerdy and a little boring compared to some of the highlight reel plays that he makes. It's, a, it's his ability to slide his feet and stay in front of the ball on the perimeter defensively. People who are watching those G League games closely would, have, would remember a play where he switched out on a Ron Holland who was blowing by everybody that game. And, you know, he, he just locked him up. I mean, Ron put, you know, went right and left and between the legs. He gave him everything he could to get by him. And it's 7-1 to be able to be that mobile laterally and that locked in and focused defensively in those types of situations. I think that's pretty special. The shot blocking is great. The fact that he can step out and knock it down from three, he can actually handle it and initiate some offense. All of that is really fun. But I think what really, to me, stands out is his ability to get out and slide his feet and stay in front of the ball at that size. You got into this industry as a player, then you really got into the media as well, and you're a fan, first and foremost, by the way you speak. Sure. You're now dealing with NBA executives on a daily basis and might be helping this league to get the number one draft pick. Do you pinch yeah. yourself as you're sitting inside <laughs> every game with the NBA executives going, uh, what, what can we do to build this program? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, a couple of moments like that. Most of all, man, I, I really love this league. You know, I grew up watching the NBL. It's how I fell in love with the game, watching Andrew Gaze and Ricky Grace. I played in it briefly, um, and I love, have loved working in it as a broadcaster. So to have the opportunity to work closely with others in the NBL to help grow the league in this particular sort of next stars space is really, really fun for me. So it's a huge honor. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a responsibility, which I don't take lightly. But most of all, I just, I'm just enjoying playing a role in the ongoing growth of the competition. What's your message to Wildcats fans and anyone who's even just a casual sporting fan about the opportunity they've got this year to watch what could be the number one draft pick and, and a long-term NBA player in Perth? Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. It's an awesome opportunity to see a prospect of that level um, this season. You know, I mean, uh, I would say don't take that for granted. Um, I think a lot of, you know, fans of, of previous guy, I think, you know, I think back to fans when, when Josh Giddy was in the league, he was the number six pick. Lamella was in the league, he was the number three pick. And you think, did I make the most of watching him while he was in the NBL? You know, did I lock in my membership and go to those games every week? Because those guys were only here for a year and then they were a top 10 draft pick. And, you know, lamella has been an all-star. Josh is going to be one. Alex is on that same kind of tra trajectory and uh, Wildcats fans have an opportunity to see him in the jungle in an awesome atmosphere on the regular this season and my message to them would be to, to take advantage of it. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's busy here at the Blitz. There's a bit of noise, there's a bit going on. There's games left, right and centre. It's been um, good to catch up and hopefully Alex uh, has a really good season to further enhance what you've done with him so far to get him into this league. Cheers, Craig. Good to chat. Sar, he's calling for it. He'll rise up from three. Nothing but net. Colin trying to break down his man, and Sar swats that into the seats. I heard and read about all the hype for Alex Sar as he comes here and just swats this thing like he's playing volleyball. He is better than advertised. So that's the excitement piece, but what about the man himself? Meeting Sar is an experience. Firstly, he's enormous. Secondly, he doesn't look 18. And thirdly, he has already done more in his life than most 18-year-olds could ever hope to achieve. Born in France, he moved to Spain at just 14 to pursue his basketball dream, then moved to the US, and now he's in Australia. So we've heard from Liam Santamaria, but what about the man himself? 
Thank you very much for joining us, Alex. Is your head spinning basically after what's happened in the past few weeks for you? You've been all around the world and everyone talking about you. Yeah, not really. You know, uh, I'm really focused on the season and uh, yeah, I think the, the, that goal definitely helps me just goal, goal setting and, and just keep, keep working. So we've spoken to Liam Santamaria about how you got to Perth and he t- he's just told us that you had an interview with John Reilly and Danny Mills and in his words, they, they knocked it out of the park. They did a great job with that interview. Can you take us back to that? Yeah, you know, I think they did a really good job. They explained to me what, uh, what was their plan uh, with me here and I really, I really seen it as, as a no-brainer for me to join the league. Just the, the, whole, the whole project really, I, I think it, it suited me well and uh, I, I wanted to be a part of the Wildcats. So what was it that made you initially, even before that meeting, that was the first interview that you had. What was it about them that made you go, out of all the options you had, we'll go there first? Yeah, you know, just like what I said, I just, I just wanted to play for the Wildcats and uh, I really like the, the system and, and the way John Riley's seen, uh, seen basketball, you know, on both sides on the floor and I wanted to be a part of it. Is it any different to how you've been sold visions by Overtime Elite or Real Madrid or any other clubs you played for? Yeah, you know, obviously it's different since it's a, it's a professional team. Uh, we're in a pro league, so so now we, it's about winning and it's about winning games. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely different from what I did before. So you're 14 when you left home, which is quite amazing when you when you can consider what a 14-year-old in this country is expected to do. How big a decision was that at the time to go, I'm going to go from France to Spain? Yeah. Yeah, it was a big decision, but you know that that's something I always knew I wanted to do. Uh, and for me, it wasn't that uh, that strange at that, at that age. It was just normal for me to to just leave home and and go to a better place to play basketball. So so that's just something I always had in mind. But that's a gamble to to go all in on a sport at that age. Were, were you always thinking at that point, you know, the NBA is my future or basketball is my future? I mean, yeah, I, I didn't take it as a gamble. I think it was it was like uh, I don't think it's it's no. Um, how can I say? I don't think it's no like bad ways that that it could go. It's just basketball at the end of the day, and I'm just having fun playing playing the sport I like. So what happens with school when you when you leave home at 14? Were you still going to school, or was it a different sort of schooling environment where you were being educated? Yeah, you know, it's still the same school. You know, you're just doing it in English instead of French, but. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, of course, uh, you still go to school until, until you graduate high school. Now, you've arrived in Australia. You don't, you don't drive, is that right? No, I don't drive yet. Are you learning to drive or how are you getting around Perth? Yeah, my mom drives me around. Uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not learning yet. Uh, I'll probably learn uh, next year, maybe. So, so many things that a normal 18-year-old is trying to go through. You're going through all of that at the same time as trying to get your career going in, in this way. How challenging is that compared to what your mates might have been doing? I don't think it's really challenging, you know. I think it's it's pretty fun. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people would love to be part of the Wildcats and, and, and be on the roster. So I'm, I think I'm just blessed and uh, I don't take it for granted, you know. Having a basketball family, has that helped you to make the decisions that you've, you've had to make? Yeah, definitely, you know. Uh, my, having my brother who plays professionally and, and having my parents that understand what, what it means being a, a high-level athlete definitely helps me, yeah. So your parents are here. Did they have they travelled with you a lot in the past, or is this the first time where they've been full time with you in a basketball environment outside of France? Uh, yeah, outside of France, that's the first time they've been full time with me. Yeah. What advantages do you see from, from having them here? What what's what's made your life better by having them here as you're on the other side of the world? Everything, you know. Uh, I think everyone would love to to live with their parents uh, in, anywhere it is, and I'm just blessed that that they they're able to to live with me. They went to. Queensland to watch you play up there what was that experience like for them and for you yeah I think it was great for them you know uh, they, they get to see more basketball and and for me it was just great to to be able to compete in the blitz and and, and to get our whole team better tell us about your dad because he obviously played at a decent level as well what sort of impact has he had on your life and your career yeah my dad uh, he used to play yeah uh, a little bit in France and has a lot of impact you know uh, since since a young age he always used to talk to me and and try to tell me the things I didn't do well on the court to make me improve. Did you ever see him play? Uh, I did, but I don't really remember. I was young. What, what does he tell you about his career? How good was he? I think he tells me it was pretty good. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it was as good as me, but I, I think it was pretty good, yeah. It felt like during the Blitz, there was a bit of a target on your back the longer it went. New Zealand really got into you physically, tried to rough you up off the ball a fair bit as well. Have you, felt, have you noticed that teams are treating you a little bit differently now that they've seen what you're capable of? I mean, I don't think uh, they're treating me different. You know, I think it's just part of playing in the NBL. You know, everybody's gonna try to put a body on me and and, and be physical, which is normal. And I just gotta adapt and, and be able to play through it. Is that the exciting part about it for you to to, to learn in this sort of environment where it is a more physical style of game? Yeah, you know, it's exciting. You know, it just 
it's, it's even helped me as a player just getting better because that, that's something I'll definitely need in the future. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm doing a great job at it. Take us back to everyone talks about the G League game, but that NBL one select game when you're playing on another former Wildcat in Tom Jervis, and he was talking to you on the court and giving you advice. What sort of information did he give you to try to make you a better player mid game? Yeah, he wasn't really giving me advice, but he was just talking. You know, uh, he was just asking me how it was Perth, and uh, and you know, it's, it's great uh, knowing he was a former Wildcat. So it's good to see like just people like him just looking out and and just being friendly. I would say on the court. Is it a different? total feeling when you go on court against these bigger bodies to what you've been accustomed to in the past? How, how, how much bigger are the guys com- from a physical standpoint compared to what you played against previously? Yeah, obviously, you know, people are bigger since they're grown men, but uh, it's not that different to me, you know. I think uh, it's, it's still the same at the end of the day. It's still basketball. We're not wrestling on the court. And uh, and and it's just, for me, like a, a physical challenge a little bit. But I think I'm doing a good job at, at just mismatching them. Have you always been this type of player with your athleticism or did you did you start shorter and then grow and, and, and develop your athleticism as a shorter player or have you always been gigantic and have just figured out how to, how to play the right way? Yeah, I had like a growth spurt when I was 14, went from like six, eight to seven foot. So I think it's been like quite a, like two years maybe that, that I'm not really growing a lot anymore. So so that, that will help me with my athleticism, just being able to grow into my body and, and become more and more physical. You see that as your biggest edge, that you aren't like a normal player of your height? Yeah, most definitely. You know, I, I think the, the athletic thing is not my only, my only good thing about my game, but it's definitely something that, that separates me. One of the things that separates me from other players, yeah. You've never played in front of more than, I think you said 4,000 people to someone the other day. You're going to have 13,000 people on Friday night. How exciting is it, the prospect of being in front of that sort of a crowd at RAC Arena? It's exciting, you know. Uh, I, I really want to want to play and... I'm excited to see what it what it's gonna feel like. What do you think it will be like? Have has anyone given you any, any advice on what the Red Army is like to play in front of? I mean, of course, you know, people will talk about it, but I think uh, you can't really explain until you really feel uh, the moment. Uh, well, look, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Good luck. We look forward to watching you throughout the season. Yes, sir. Thanks for your time. The Next Stars program is really exciting. It's already produced Lamelo Ball and Josh Giddy, as Liam mentioned earlier. And there is no doubt that NBA teams now view Australia as a legitimate pathway to the big time. Utah Jazz General Manager Justin Zanuck was among the NBA roadshow that travelled to the Gold Coast, and this is what he told me about the program. The NBL Rising Stars program, or Next Stars program, excuse me, you know, is continuing to develop and having these young players that have a chance to compete in, against guys that have a lot of experience in, in specific systems in a professional environment um, with professional physios and professional coaches and there's no school anymore so these guys get to really focus on their jobs in a great environment so it's a great scouting event for us and uh, the league as a whole will be here all year as the next stars program continues to grow so it's all extremely exciting for perth wildcats fans and no matter what happens on the court from a team perspective this season everyone should seize the moment to see alex Sar in action because this is an opportunity that won't come along very often now, on to the latest news from the Wildcats. They have signed American Christian Doolittle as their third import, and they will be hoping he becomes Christian Doolots while he is here. He's a 201 centimetre forward with experience in Japan, Puerto Rico, Israel, and the NBA G League. Depending on when you're listening to this, he's either in the air en route to Perth or he has just landed. And when he does, you can guarantee questions will be asked about an argument he had with his coach in France, which led to him being released from his contract just one week ago, thereby making him available to the Wildcats to recruit. Wildcats General Manager of Basketball Operations, Danny Mills, has already said that the club has done due diligence around Doolittle and feel that he will slot into the team extremely well and have no concerns over his behaviour. Uh, it's my understanding it was an argument and not an altercation as it was put together by the French media. Different terminology, certainly in different countries, can say different things, but it wasn't a physical uh, altercation. It was an argument about roles within the team. And we know that having spoken to a lot of people who travel to different parts of the world to play basketball, 
culture is a different thing and Europe can be challenging for some players in some ways. One thing that is certain about the Wildcats is that they know how to make a splash when announcing their roster and that's both good and bad with the way the news can come out. That's it for this week's episode of the Dribble Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed getting an insight into Alex Saar. Thanks to Alex, thanks to Liam Santa Maria, and thank you to Justin Zanuck for their time. You can read all of your basketball news in the West Australian newspaper and at thewest.com.au. I'll be back next week with another episode of the Dribble Podcast.